season three for Modern Warfare 3 just went live and I'm gonna go over everything that they patched in zombies and show you everything that's still working. Here's their patch notes here and I'll scroll down and show you everything they said for zombies. They didn't say a whole lot and it didn't look like they patched much but I went in game and checked everything to see what was still working. I'll show you all of that but first show you what it says in the patch notes. It says new content coming in season, a new story mission, Dark Ether Rift and set of schematics are on the horizon. Check out the Call of Duty blog for more details on what to expect later in season three. Then they fixed something with the ether shroud. There was like a visual bug and then they removed the ability to apply ether tools to vehicle turrets. They said, yeah, you can put the tools on, but it doesn't increase the damage of the vehicle turret and you're wasting your tools. So they stop people from being able to do it. Next issue they fixed was with the VR-11. They addressed an issue that prevented the VR-11 from transforming warlord bodyguards into zombies. And then here's the nerf we knew was coming, the Jack Purifier. They decreased the amount of damage that the Jack Purifier does to elite and boss enemy types. They go on to say that the Jack Purifier was overperforming with the previous tuning against more difficult enemies, you think? <laughs> with this new tuning, players can still utilize the attachment to manage large groups of lesser enemies in all threat zones and use different tactics to engage more difficult foes. I just went in to test the Purifier to see how bad it is now and I'll show you guys what the results are. Last thing in the patch notes is about challenges, prestige challenges, unlock new prestige calling card challenges at each level of prestige reached and select up to five challenges to track, including any from across the game. The patch notes didn't mention anything about Tombstone, the Etherblade glitch, the Bite glitch, the Outlast contract glitch, so I went in and tested all of those. But first, I'll show you guys the Jack Purifier and the nerf that they did to it. I didn't know if they were gonna just nerf this thing into an oblivion or if this thing was still worth using. Before the patch, we were indeed melting elites in tier three. With the flamethrower, you could kill a mega abomination in under 10 seconds seconds and still have ammo left in the flamethrower. And you didn't even need to hit any critical spots on the Mega Abomination. You just fired that thing anywhere at it and you were going to kill it. But now after the patch, with it being triple pack a punch and legendary, you have to use all of the ammo in the flamethrower. And you can only take about 60% of its health off. Right here I stopped the gameplay and you can see on the bottom right I'm out of ammo and it still has 40% health left. If I were to guess how much they decreased this damage damage against elites by, I would say maybe 50%. It seems to be at least that. It could be even more. As far as regular zombies go, this thing is still absolutely destroying and it's doing a really good job on like these basic elites here. Like I just wrecked this mimic, no problem. This nerf didn't really hurt this weapon because you're able to kill everything else so easily still. Like you may need two people now with flamethrowers to kill a mega or go refill your ammo, but it's not a big deal. Here's a tier three main kill obviously contracts will be harder but I feel like you're not gonna notice this nerf at all unless you're going up against a mega abomination I do personally think this nerf was appropriate that flamethrower was way too OP although a lot of fun we knew that was not gonna last <laughs> the next thing I went in to test to see if it still worked was the solo tombstone method and I am surprised to say they did not patch this or change this in any way this one is where you open that portal run to the bad signal, trigger that, go back through the portal, and then run out of bounds, then close out the game at the appropriate time, and you'll save everything and save your tombstone. I'm a little shocked they didn't patch this, and I'm wondering if they're doing that on purpose, because they know people are going to lose their freaking minds when they do. From what I can tell, this is the last known possible tombstone solo method. After this, it may be gone forever. We'll have to see what happens mid-season. That's when we're getting all the zombies content, the new storyline, the new schematics, like that's when this might be gone for good. But yeah, right here, if you leave match at the right time, you're gonna keep all your stuff, keep your ether blades in your lethal spot, and when you go back in, your tombstone will still be there with all the items and your money. The next thing I wanted to test is the mule kick glitch. This doesn't have a lot of popularity, but some people use it to turn their insured weapons into contraband weapons and stack them up. This also lets you hold three weapons in game and you go to one of these safes with the raid weapon stash and down yourself 
and interact with it at the right time. Then when you revive, you'll switch weapons until you have an empty slot. And that is the third weapon slot where you can go pick up any gun off the ground, out of the box or off the wall. I just did this this morning. That's the footage you're seeing here. And this still works. It's not patched. This next one is the underwater bike god mode glitch. If you have a blood burner bike, you can launch yourself into the air and dive into the water and you can drive underwater without drowning. And shout out to Tag935. Him and I were in one of his live streams weeks ago and we found this, but we never posted it. As long as you get enough height, you can dive underwater and we like to use that area in the north part of the tier three. The next one I checked is the Outlast Unlimited Spawns glitch. You just activate one of the Outlast contracts and then wait for that progression bar to get to about 93%. Then you cancel the contract and what happens is the game thinks the contract is still running and it will throw a ton of zombies at you still. And those zombie spawns will be rapid and stay unlimited as long as you don't go too far away from the building. Like if you go two blocks away and then come back, yeah, it may kill the spawns. I tested this and this still works. I'm really surprised they've never patched this. This next one is how to keep your ether blades and your containment level when leaving the game. You're not supposed to be able to keep your ether blades in your lethal spot when you leave the game and come back in. They want you to craft them every time and it's got a really long cooldown of like multiple days. But if you have your ether blades equipped and you want to keep them that way, just go to the bad signal and interact with it and then vote yes saying you want to leave and then you want to get ready to close the game. I just hover over close game and as soon as I see that teleportation screen, that's when I close it out. When you do this, you don't lose any containment levels. You'll keep what you had when you went in or whatever you've earned when you were in there and you also keep your ether blades in your lethal spot and you can take them back into the next match. This is for people that just want to keep their blades and keep their containment levels but not worry about tombstone because with this method obviously you can't keep your tombstone. This one I always check every update they've never patched it and this is the god mode glitch in the tier 3 area underneath this excavator. In fact any excavator on the map you can get up underneath and create a pileup. This is also great if you need to go afk or go to the bathroom or whatever. We used to go dive under the water and be able to not drown with flopper but they patched that so this is an alternative to that. But yeah this still works and again any excavator in any tier will work. This last thing isn't a glitch, but it's a new melee weapon that I wanted to try out from the battle pass. It's the new gladiator melee weapon. And personally, I love the melee weapons in this game. They're like so OP. The Tonfa is my favorite, followed by the Karambit. This thing has a very interesting shape and I wanted to see if it's doing any more damage than these other melee weapons because sometimes the new weapons can be super OP. But when you check the specs, it's the exact same specs as the Karambit. I went ahead and took it in game just to see if there's anything crazy with it. I triple pack a punched it, put a legendary tool on it and yeah obviously it's absolutely destroying just like the Karambit. It's a one melee for everything in tier one just like the Karambit which is a lot of fun. In tier three it's also wrecking very powerful weapon. Again this thing is just like the Karambit and there's one reason I don't use the Karambit even though I love it. It's got a really hard lunge on it. If you're close meleeing zombies it will pull you into them and it can get you surrounded and killed. This is why I opt for the Tonfa. The Tonfa is just as powerful as a melee and it doesn't pull you in or lunge you towards zombies as hard. And this gladiator is doing the same thing as the Karambit. It is lunging you at the zombies really hard. If it didn't have that lunge, I would definitely be choosing this over the Tonfa. And unfortunately, I'll be avoiding this new gladiator melee weapon. Hope this helped you guys out and we'll see you next video.